Good morning, everyone. My name is Kristen Gaddis, and today I will be presenting material on genomic evaluations of feed saved in Holsteins. Before diving in, I'd like to acknowledge all of my co-authors that are listed here on this first slide. This is a large effort for everyone involved with a lot of moving pieces, and it would not be possible without everyone's contribution. Starting with a quick outline of what I will cover today, I will start out with a brief discussion of the raw data that goes into the feed saved evaluations in the US, including what data are collected and how they are edited and processed. Then I will move on to the evaluation of residual feed intake, or RFI, how that is incorporated into our trait of feed saved, and some general statistics of those evaluations. Last, but certainly not least, I will discuss the upcoming inclusion of feed saved in net merit as well as the future plans for feed efficiency in the U.S. Many of you may already know that the U.S. Feed Efficiency Database was initiated over 10 years ago through a NEFA grant with the official title of Genomic Selection and Herd Management for Improved Feed Efficiency of the Dairy Industry. This grant spanned from approximately 2010 through 2017. The data included daily records of intake and yield during mid-lactation for at least 28 days, but most for at least 42 days. This amounted to over 537,000 daily records. More than 110,000 regularly measured component records were also collected, along with additional data such as body weights, body condition scores, health events, and diet composition. Based on these data, the researchers demonstrated that feed efficiency, as measured by RFI, is a heritable trait that can be improved through genomic selection. As expected, however, given the small reference population size, the trait had low reliabilities. They identified a need for continued data collection given the significant economic and environmental implications for improved feed efficiency. This led to the successful proposal to continue collection and research of feed efficiency data jointly funded by the Foundation for Food and Agriculture Research and the CDCB. This project officially began in the spring of 2019, following a similar protocol as that that was described previously. As it stands today, there have been 255,000 daily records compiled of intake and yield. More than 51,000 component measurements have been collected, and more than 66,000 body weight measurements have been collected. Body condition score, health events, and diet composition are all still collected regularly as well. A lot of effort is put into ensuring that this data is consistent and reliable. Daily data are compiled and edited, checked for outliers and missing data, both by CDCB and the contributing institution. This helps to identify any incorrect data at an early stage, and the university researchers work with us during this process to validate any questions that arise. Residual feed intake, or RFI, is then calculated following the methodology developed during the NEFA project which I will touch on in the next slide. The RFI phenotypes are then combined and cross-checked with the associated data from the CDCB Cooperator database, including pedigree checks, birth dates, calving dates, parity, etc. In calculating RFI, we use an energy sink model following Templeman and colleagues from 2015. Effects include parity class, which is defined as first versus later, by fifth order polynomial of dry matter intake on days in milk, partial regressions on milk energy, metabolic body weight, and change in body weight, random effect of the experiment specific ration, and the random effect of text week. From this model, the residual is then taken as RFI. These models are calculated within each specific station or location. The table included on this slide gives the most recently available phenotype counts for RFI. I have included columns for both the initial NEFA project, the ongoing FFAR and CDCB project, and then those two combined in the last column. The first four rows include participants only in the first NEFA project and thus do not have values in the column for FFAR and the CDCB project. The remaining institutions are participants in both studies, including the University of Wisconsin-Madison, Michigan State University, Iowa State University, the Animal Genomics and Improvement Lab of ARS USDA, and the University of Florida. 
Thus far, we have collected close to 2,000 RFI phenotypes in the two years of the current study. Combined with the 4,700 collected previously during the NEFA study, we currently have over 6,600 RFI phenotypes on U.S. Holsteins. In addition to the phenotypes collected on U.S. Holsteins, we also have set up a data exchange with Lactinet for the purposes of genetic evaluations. CDCB and the researchers involved in the FFAR CDCB project are also participating in the Resilient Dairy Genome Project. The last official evaluation in April 2021 incorporated 660 RFI phenotypes calculated from data collected at three Canadian herds, resulting in a gain of approximately 1 to 2 percentage points in the reliability. The upcoming August 2021 evaluations will incorporate a total of 845 phenotypes from these same three Canadian herds, bringing our overall total to over 7,500 RFI phenotypes. There is also the possibility to incorporate additional international data in the future. For the genetic evaluations, RFI is used as a phenotype for Holsteins only at this time, as we only have data on Holstein animals. The evaluation process follows a typical pipeline, as most other traits evaluated at the CDCB in a two-step process. First, a traditional or pedigree-based evaluation is performed using an animal repeatability model. The effects of the model for RFI include an age parity group, trial date, herd management group, permanent environment, and herd sire interaction. Regressions on the genomic evaluation for milk net energy and body weight composite are also included. Then these evaluations are deregressed and used in a genomic model to estimate SNP effects for all genotyped Holstein animals. This process uses the standard set of approximately 80,000 SNPs that are used with all other official CDCB evaluations. Feed saved, which is a combination of RFI and body weight composite, is the official trait evaluated by CDCB, similar to that used in Australia. It has a simpler interpretation being the expected pounds of feed saved based both on an animal's feed efficiency measured as RFI and being a smaller body size. In that way, it captures both energy wasted due to biological inefficiency and energy wasted due to excessive body size. Because of the inclusion of body weight composite, which is shown to the right with its individual traits, the reliability of feed saved is also higher than just RFI alone. Below, highlighted in yellow, I have included the formula that is used to calculate feed saved from body weight composite and RFI. 151.8 represents the pounds of dry matter intake per unit of body weight composite, which is combined with an animal's RFI PTA. In this representation, larger, more positive values are favorable as it indicates more pounds of feed saved. This slide provides some basic statistics of the feed saved evaluations as of the April 2021 evaluation. It includes all animals receiving a CDCB genomic evaluation. The average feed saved PTA for these animals is near zero at approximately 21 pounds of feed saved poor lactation with a standard deviation of 128. Overall, the genomic PTAs range from an excess of 689 pounds of feed eaten per lactation up to 922 pounds of feed saved per lactation. The overall distribution is shown on the left where you can see that the majority of PTAs range between approximately 400 pounds of feed eaten in excess versus 400 pounds of feed saved. The average genomic reliability for feed saved is about 38% and ranges from a low of 10% up to 95%. Despite the intensive data collection and processing that it requires, feed saved is an important trait given that over half of the cost of production come from feed costs. The inclusion of feed saved in the NetMare Index is estimated to improve profitability by $8 million per year. Feed saved evaluations are currently available as a standalone trait and have been since December 2020. With the upcoming August evaluations of this year, Feed saved will be included in the net merit formula for the first time. Additionally, RFI PTAs will be made available alongside feed saved in order to maintain full transparency and help the industry interpret the evaluation results. In addition to incorporating feed saved, 
the availability of individual intake and production data has enabled additional necessary revisions to previous assumptions in the net merit index. The maintenance requirements were found to be about 50% greater than those previously suggested by the NRC in 2001 and greater than twice those previously used in net merit. Because of this, an increased maintenance cost is applied to body weight composite in the net merit update being implemented in August. Additionally, the fee cost required for milk, fat, and protein production will be adjusted with all decreasing compared to what was previously assumed. To wrap up the presentation, a few concluding remarks. The data needed to estimate feed efficiency is still limited due to the intensive collection that it requires. Genomic evaluations of feed efficiency in Holsteins are currently provided by the CDCB as feed saved, which is a combination of RFI and body weight composite. Feed safe will be incorporated into the 2021 net merit formula, which will be first implemented with the August 2021 evaluations. Ultimately, despite the intensive data collection required and the low reliabilities at this initial stage, the inclusion of feed saved, along with several other revisions in the net merit index, will help producers select the most profitable animals. Looking ahead from here, we currently lack any silver bullet proxy trait that will allow us to evaluate feed efficiency without such intensive data collection. Research is ongoing as part of the FFAR CDCB project to identify any proxy measures that may exist. However, we know the impact of improving feed efficiency, and we also know the importance of having recent data closely related to the current population. With this, we are continuing to collect data for the ongoing FFAR and CDCB feed efficiency project and also actively working to identify additional opportunities to expand and continue this data collection. With that, I would like to again acknowledge the many contributors that have made this work possible, including my colleagues at CDCB and Agile, as well as the data providers and dairy producers. And for this project, the FFAR CDCB feed efficiency team from Michigan State University, University of Wisconsin-Madison, Iowa State University, University of Florida, and Agile, in addition to our northern neighbors at Lactinet. Thank you.